Well, hello everyone and welcome to a new episode of the Jazz Flashes videocast. My name is Anton Garcia Fernandez and I publish both the Jazz Flashes and the Vintage Bandstand blogs that you can find on the internet. And I'm talking to you from Tennessee in the United States of America. And today, in this video, we're going to be talking about a singer. We're going to be going back to the 1920s and 1930s to talk about a singer about whom I've already published uh, an article on the Vintage Bandstand not too long ago. But I would like to share a few impressions about him uh, with everyone out there in this video. I'm talking about a man who was born in Worcester, Massachusetts back in 1899 and his name is Chester Gaylord. Chester Gaylord was perhaps one of the most obscure singers, one of the most uh, obscure, lesser known singers of the 1920s and 1930s, even though he was very busy both on records and on radio back in those days. Chester Gaylord um, is a name that perhaps you haven't heard mainly because there are no CDs, as far as I know, devoted to his music these days. I haven't been able to find a single CD that is devoted to his music. Uh, fortunately, the good folks at the Internet Archive online have made available several of his records and also some radio cuts, and I will leave the uh, link uh, underneath the video so you may be able to go to that uh, website and download for free some of the uh, recordings and uh, radio appearances by Chester Gaylord from the 1920s and 30s. Um, I will also leave some um, links to some YouTube videos that will also give you samples of Chester Gaylord's music. As I say, he's a singer that you don't get to hear too much about these days. Uh, he's not very well known. He has been completely forgotten, but he made some fine records in the 1920s and in the 1930s. Um, he, uh, in fact, uh, made some records uh, in the early 1920s, not as a singer, but as a saxophonist. He began playing the saxophone, and in fact he played the sax saxophone on Navy, Navy bands when he uh, went into the Navy uh, in sometime in the late teens or early 20s. And so in the early 20s he made some uh, records for Edison uh, as a saxophonist, playing the saxophone and not uh, singing. Uh, at some point he moved to New York City and spent some time there, but he returned to his hometown in Massachusetts um, because he got a chance uh, to become a radio announcer on a local radio in Worcester, Massachusetts. I believe the radio station was WTAG. Uh, and he was both a radio announcer in those days and also a singing pianist. He took every chance that he got to play uh, the piano and sing over the airwaves. And uh, possibly that was the way in which uh, he got a recording contract for Columbia Records, which was one of the major uh, companies at the time and he made some records uh, for Columbia and later on he signed with Brunswick Records which was also one of the most important uh, major uh, record companies at the time. Uh, in the uh, late 20s and early 30s he made some records for Brunswick and those are I believe among the best records that he ever made. Uh, they include some sidemen on those um, records that are very important jazz men of the period that were uh, still starting out at that time. People like Gene Krupa or Red Nichols or Tommy and Jimmy Dorsey or Manny Klein. They all appear on some of these records that um, Chester Gaylord made in the uh, late 1920s, although it's also true that he made some records accompanied only by ukulele and piano. And, uh, some of those you can find on the Internet Archive. Uh, besides making records under his own name, and some of them with really good, uh, very important jazz men of the period, uh, he also uh, provided vocal refrains for dance band records. So sometimes Chester uh, Gaylord will uh, be found uh, providing uh, vocal refrains on uh, records by dance bands, uh, led by people like uh, Jacques Renard and uh, Jack Denny, uh, some minor dance bands, that's true, but uh, 
if you get to listen to the records on YouTube you'll see that they are very interesting records and I think that Chester Gaylord uh, had a very pleasant voice uh, he was perhaps not as jazzy as uh, Ben Crosby for example um, and his voice I often tend to think that his voice lay somewhere in between that of Bing Crosby, the, the not as jazzy as I'm saying, and uh, that of Rudy Valley, but a little bit more powerful than the voice of Rudy Valley. Uh, of course, um, Chester Gaylor was a contemporary of great crooners of that time period, like Rudy Valley and Bing Crosby and Russ Colombo and Gene Austin, and for some reason he is not as well known or as well remembered as they are these days, but he was very busy and uh, uh, very popular both on records and on radio around that time and the records that we uh, that I've been able to find by Chester Gaylord are very interesting records very enjoyable I go back to them uh, pretty often because I find them very good um, sometime in the early 1930s uh, Chester Gaylord's contract was dropped by Brunswick and so he didn't record for Brunswick again as far as I know but he stayed pretty busy on radio uh, he appeared on uh, several radio shows some of them uh, at least one of them sponsored by Coca-Cola and um, he sang with um, the bands of Leonard Joy and Ben Pollock even on radio in this uh, era in the 1930s um, he was not the most swinging of uh, singers. Uh, he was more of a straight-ahead crooner, although he did understand the language of jazz, as we can hear on uh, some of his recordings, and he made some records of songs that would become standard, songs like Glad Rag Doll, for example, or Mean to Me, um, sometime in the 20s. I believe that Mean to Me version that you can find on YouTube is from 1929. Um, but in the 1930s he concentrated on radio appearances and that's basically what uh, he did and then in the 1940s uh, at some point he uh, moved to Boston and got a job on radio in Boston and uh, by the 1960s, by the mid 1960s of course after the <coughs> appearance of rock and roll um, singers of the past <laughs> like uh, Chester Gaylor didn't uh, stand much of a chance on radio uh, so he uh, throughout the 50s and 60s concentrated more on uh, his uh, radio announcing and he had uh, retired from the radio business by the mid 1960s but he had uh, always uh, been interested in performing um, and therefore even after he retired from radio he kept performing occasionally at live venues uh, mostly singing and playing the piano which is what he um, did throughout most of his life uh, both on records and on radio and then also uh, on live appearances and by the time he passed away in the mid 1980s uh, he had been performing occasionally pretty much until um, the year that he died even though uh, by the time he died not very many people remembered his records from the 1920s and 30s or his radio appearances, but he still uh, jumped at any chance that he had to perform. Such was his love of performing live in front of an audi audience and playing the piano and singing, which was uh, what he uh, always enjoyed doing. Um, Chester Gaylord is, should not be confused with Charles Gaylord. Uh, Charles Gaylord in the 1920s and 30s was uh, a member of the Paul Whiteman Orchestra and despite the fact that they bo both shared the last, uh, same last name and their names were fairly similar, Chester Gaylord and Charles Gaylord, we shouldn't mistake Chester uh, for Charles Gaylord or Charles Gaylord for Chester Gaylord because they were two different people. We've been talking about Chester Gaylord as the singing pianist and radio announcer. Uh, fine crooner from the, from the 1920s and 30s, Charles Gaylord was a violinist in the uh, Paul Whiteman Orchestra and uh, he was also very often the, uh, a member of the um, sweet vocal trio with the Paul Whiteman or Orchestra that uh, often uh, sang behind Bing Crosby on some of the records that Bing made with 
the Paul Wyman Orchestra in the 1920s before he struck out on his own and became the big star that um, he was throughout the 20th century, one of the most important singers of the 20th, of the 20th century, um, Bing Crosby was, of course. But uh, when he started out with Paul uh, Weidman, uh, he was often featured with a vocal trio that included Charles Gaylord, who is not Chester Gaylord. Charles G Gaylord played the violin and sang with the Paul Weidman Orchestra, whereas Chester Gaylord, although he did record in New York City, he never, uh, as far as I know, played the violin. He knew how to play the saxophone and the piano, and he sang but he didn't play the violin. Uh, I've also seen pictures of Chester Gaylord and pictures of Charles Gaylord that uh, make it clear that they were not the same person. So uh, we should not mistake Chester Gaylord and Charles Gaylord. As I say, Chester Gaylord was a singer and pianist, a crooner and a pianist, and a uh, radio announcer as well, and Charles Gaylord was a violinist with the Paul Weidman Orchestra in the 1920s and 30s, and he also occasionally sang with the uh, vocal trio, uh, sweet vocal trio, uh, within the ranks of the Paul Weidman Orchestra. And I think I'm going to leave it here. I simply wanted to uh, talk a little bit about the figure of singer, pianist, and radio announcer Chester Gaylord from um, Worcester, Massachusetts. Uh, he was born in 1899 and died in the mid-1980s. And unfortunately, uh, his music is not available on CD as far as I know, but you can always go to the Internet Archive and download for free, at least at the time of recording of this video, this was possible, download for free the uh, recordings and radio appearances that you can find in the uh, Internet Archive under Charles Gaylor. I think it's um, well uh, worth listening to his records and you can also go to vintagebandstand.blogspot.com and there you can read the article that I recently wrote about uh, Chester Gaylord who back in the day was known as the Whispering Serenader. My name is Anton Garcia Fernandez and I hope you found this video interesting if so, you can go to jazzflashes.blogspot.com or vintagebandstand.blogspot.com and uh, read the articles about jazz and big bands and the crooners that I write frequently and publish on those websites. Thank you very much for your attention. Signing off now from Martin in the state of Tennessee in the United States of America. Thank you.